Well, hello there and welcome back to my channel. Today, by popular demand, I'm gonna be showing you how to knit Magic Loop. And trust me guys, this is such a great technique to have in your knitting tool belt. If you're not familiar with what Magic Loop is, it's an alternative way to knit things in the round. Traditionally, DPNs or double pointed needles are used to knit things in the round, but I find Magic Loop brilliant because I'm not having to manage all these needles at the same time. Plus it's very compact and I find it speeds up my knitting because I'm not having to constantly look down at what my hands are doing. Um, I can just go Go on autopilot and go around and around and around without without having to think about it. I personally love using Magic Loop for knitting socks. It's also great if you don't have a short needle for, let's say, knitting the brim of a hat or uh, a cuff of a sweater or jumper. Um, it's really handy and I hope you guys enjoy learning how to do it. All you need is some yarn and a pair of circular knitting needles. I would recommend a circular needle no shorter than 24 inches. I only say that because you want enough slack to keep your stitches separated and manageable. So all this will make sense in a moment, but yes, nothing shorter than a 24 inch circular. So to get started, we are going to cast on our stitches. And for demonstration purposes, I am going to cast on 20 using a long tail cast on, but you can use whatever cast on you prefer or whatever cast on the pattern recommends. 18, 19, 20. Once we have all of our stitches cast on, we're just gonna scooch them down onto the cable bit and divide our stitch count in half. So since I have 20 stitches, I'm just gonna count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This can also just be ballpark as well. It doesn't have to be precise, but if you're OCD like me, I like to keep things even. So dividing your stitch count in half, you're going to reach in and pull the cable out from between the stitches like so. So you have a nice little floppy loop right here and keep pulling your stitches onto the needles and scooch them up towards the tips like so. And here is where you are. So you have a nice big loop on one end and your stitches separated, divided onto two needles on this end. As with anything knit in the round, you wanna make sure that your stitches aren't twisted. So checking over my stitches, everything looks good. All right. Now, one more thing before we join it in the round, we wanna make sure that the needle furthest from us has our working yarn and yarn tail. So make sure that that's hanging nicely down and freely like so. And then taking one hand and gently securing your stitches, taking your other hand, pulling the needle furthest from you out like so, so that now the stitches closest to you still have stitches on them and the, the stitches that were on the needle furthest from you are now resting on the cable. And you still wanna maintain this loop over here. And now taking the empty needle, we're going to insert it into that first stitch on the needle that is closest to you and simply knit it giving it a nice little tug. Quick tip, I actually like knitting the first couple of stitches, holding the working yarn and the yarn tail together just to close any initial gaps uh, at the join, if that makes any sense. Um, I find it really gives it a nice finish. So I'm just gonna knit three stitches like that. Two, three, and then drop the tail. Just let it fall to the back like so. And now you see we have two loops on either end and I'm just going to continue knitting the stitches from that first needle. At this stage, they kind of look like elephant ears. So <laughs> if, that's the, if that's a visualization that helps you, then by all means go for it. And when I come to that last stitch, I have a new empty needle. And you're probably wondering, what do I do now? Well, <laughs> it's quite simple, my friend. We, we simply, we flip it over so that the stitches that we just worked are on the needle furthest from us. And then we pull our free needle back through the stitches that still need to be worked from our cast on. So does this look familiar? We're back to square one. We're just going to repeat what we did on the first step. So uh, taking the needle that is furthest from us, we're just going to pull it out so we have a new empty needle in our in our right hand um, or left hand if you are a continental knitter. And now we're just going to insert the needle into that first stitch, giving it a nice little tug to eliminate any ladders and just knit the stitches off that needle. Like so. Like so. 
And now we have a new free needle. I actually got this going a little more so you can get a better idea of like what's happening here. So you can see my tube is beginning to form. So I've got my working yarn on the needle furthest from me and I'm just going to pull that needle out like so. And here I still have my needle that is closest to me. I'm going to take my empty needle and insert that into the first needle and just knit those stitches off that needle like so. And you can certainly do any type of stitch using magic loop. I'm just using plain stockinette for demonstration purposes. Uh, and when I reach the end and I knit the last stitch, I have a new empty needle. And now all I'm going to do is flip my work over. So my working yarn is once again hanging from the needle furthest from me. And I'm going to pull the cable of the needle that is closest to me back through those stitches, if that makes sense, <laughs> like so. And we're back to square one. New needle with stitches ready to be worked. I'm just going to pull the needle furthest from me out, like so, and knit the stitches from the needle closest to me. Rinse and repeat. This is just the basic magic loop technique. There are many different ways you can employ magic loop, more, more complex ways. For example, if you're knitting a sock, once you're done knitting the leg or the foot and you're ready to knit the heel, there's a special way to divide the stitches on your circular needle when knitting magic loop. But if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll see what I can whip up for you guys. And that, my friends, is how you magic loop. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out videos for your viewing pleasure every week. And and as you can see, I'm, I'm already on autopilot. I have no idea what I'm knitting. It's, it's going to be a tube. It's green. Maybe, maybe it'll be a hungry caterpillar. I'm hungry actually. It's, it's lunchtime. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Bye.